and we talked about I don't know I just see this this a pattern of following Christ and and understanding um, the word of God and understanding that the blessing is Jesus Christ and we found out this morning you know um, we have to have an example amen that example that's what when she was giving her testimony the young man says I have an example to believe that I can make it past this I told you like the woman walked on the glass that, you know sometimes you don't believe you can do something but you need an example and Christ is our example and being able to forgive and to love and and Christ is that mirror that shows us the error but also shows us the correction amen that shows us the error but teaches us how to bring it into correction and I thank God that you know you can look in that mirror of the word and, and you know I, I said this morning the Bible said he said um faith without works is dead he says but when a, it's like a man looking in the mirror and when we don't do the word and when he looks in the mirror he turns away forgetting right who he is in other words when he's looking in the reflection of the word of God but he but we do not do what God says then it's forgetting straight who we are in the image that's called and because how many of us know Christ is the image in which we were called to be because Christ is actually the visible image of the invisible God and we were created the Bible said let us create man in our image and after our likeness so when we look at Christ who is the image of God in the natural and when we partake of the word of God when we look upon that word that word is shaping us and molding us into the image and after the likeness of God that we were called to be since the foundation before sin took place amen and a lot of times when we look in that mirror that mirror is showing that something might be out of line there's something that's not lining up but that mirror is not showing to condemn it's showing to correct amen it's showing to correct and that mirror is exposing what I call the heart and I want to go what well God want to go this evening I thought it was interesting because I was talking to somebody and found out and it, it God kind of led me where we are going to go this evening and I want let's go to Matthew 7 first And I want us to begin to read it, Matthew 7. We're going to read it, verse 20. And we're going to go on. I want us to kind of show that, how many of us know this? That without God being the mirror. See, if I'm looking at God, the, Jesus Christ as the mirror, which is correcting me and bringing things into order, it's changing me. That's why it's important for me to understand who I'm dealing with is also in the mirror. I got to be able to see the reflection of God in who I'm dealing with. I got to be able to see the fruit of a, because discernment, people think discernment is so weird. Discernment is being able to listen to, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. To listen to somebody and to watch and to be able to discern if that's in alignment with the word of God. It's, it's in alignment with the mirror. Are they in alignment with the mirror? And when you, uh, and, and you can't discern something if you're not spiritual. People are like, well, I felt something. I felt something was wrong, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you felt something. You might have felt something that was wrong. But discernment is not about feeling something. It's knowing something. Discernment is not like, I, I feel like there's something strange about that person. No. Discernment is understanding when that person speaks or the way they live that it's not in line with the Word of God. In other words, they're not in, they haven't been to the mirror yet. When you're not in line with the Word, that means you haven't gone to the mirror and been able to see the reflection of Jesus, uh, uh, the error that you're walking in, and you can't see it yet. Because how many of you know, if, I, if, if a woman does her makeup, and she goes to somebody else, and, and they can see her eyeliner messed up, or they can see something messed up, she can't see it. Even if they're talking to her, she can't see it because she doesn't see the mirror yet. She has to go to the mirror and be a, and they can say, girl, and they might say, girl, your makeup messed up. And she's like, oh, man, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Until she get in the mirror and the mirror begin to show her your makeup is messed up. Y'all know what I'm talking about because we don't have people tell us all the time, man, you got a nasty attitude. Be like, man, get out my face. And we don't receive it until we get in the mirror and God begin to show you what a good attitude is. And be like, I don't look like that right there. 
Can I get an amen? So I thank God for the mirror, but the mirror also deals with the, if I say the heart, and I, I want to show you something in Matthew 7. We're going to go to Matthew 7, 20 and start reading. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. He said, by the what? By their fruit, you will know them. He said, you're going to know them by their fruit. So Matthew 7, 20 said, you're going to know them by what? Their fruit. He said, if you've been in the mirror, how many know when he's talking about the fruit, he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit? Everybody with me? He's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. He said, you're going to know them by their fruit. So what is he saying? He's saying that you should be able to know if you've been in the mirror, then the mirror you've been in is reflected. If I've been, if Jesus Christ is the Word of God, if I've been in the Word of God, amen, and I've been in the mirror, then I can also know somebody else. That's what discernment is, knowing somebody else by their fruit, amen? What is their fruit? That which is lined up with the Word of God. In other words, you should be able to know them by their fruit. You're going to know if somebody is in alignment. So look at somebody and say, so I won't be deceived. Now watch this. But if you have not been in the mirror of the word of God, how are you going to know what fruit look like if you don't have no fruit in yourself? Come on, that's how we all was. You was, I was, all of us like that. Before I went into the mirror, you know what? I thought I looked good. Come on, y'all know how it is. When, you, when we was in the world, we thought we had it going on. You ain't looking in the mirror. You, you, the mirror you was looking at, you was looking at man's mirror. But when you started looking at God's, you was all right. Because, you know, we like, I'm good, man. You know, I got my hair good. You know what I'm saying? I've been working out. I'm like, but, but God said, but God said, but when you look at them, he said, you'll know them by their fruit. But how many know when you haven't been in the mirror, fruit, you can be easily deceived by somebody's nice behavior. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. When people are appealing to what you like and what the things you like and whatever, they are appealing to your flesh. There's a pleasure in appealing to someone's ple flesh, but that doesn't mean that person has fruit. Can I get an amen? In other words, come on. When, when, when I was in the world, we spit that game and this and that with the young ladies. Or we spit the game with people. Or we With our bosses or with family, we did this. But how many of y'all have seen situations like this? Oh, man, she think her daughter so good. She need to see her daughter in school. Y'all know y'all being quiet now, huh? Or she think her son's so good. In other words, that, that mirror, that, that worldly mirror could act one way in front of your face and act another way. It's not constant. It's always, but he said in the scripture starting out, you will know them by the fruit. But, the, but what he's talking about, you, you got to go deeper. You got to go to the mirror of God. And the mirror of God has to, what I, remember this, I want to keep saying this. The mirror is not just about exposing error. That's why some people don't like the ground. Man, I don't want to go to church. I feel uncomfortable. They made, man, they made it. No, 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 no. The mirror does expose error, but it's not about not exposing error. It does expose error, but the same word that exposes error is the same word that causes you to clean it up. Amen? It's the same mirror. In other words, like I told y'all, I showed you this morning, when a woman's makeup is messed up, when she goes to the mirror, the same mirror that showed her lipstick was off it's the same mirror that shows us how to put it in place. Y'all better get this. So the word of God is the same word that shows you that you, that, that you got an attitude, but it's the same word that know how to put that attitude in place. Amen? So sometimes we get mad because it shows us that we got an attitude. Like I was talking to, I was talking to, it was funny, I was talking to one of my spiritual daughters today, and I said something to her, and she got kind of like, I could tell she got kind of salty with it. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I ain't, she ain't like what I was saying to her. And she was like, um, so maybe we need to talk and elaborate on this a little longer. I said, yeah, we can talk, elaborate. I said, but I'm not, but I had to be very you know, soft tone and let her know. I said, what I'm trying to show you is that your life affects other life. So what you do, you need to be careful about it because the fact is, and at the end, she understood what I was saying to her. But she, what she told me was funny. She said, well, nobody ever really came at me like that. And I said, that's kind of funny. So what, we, what was she really saying to me? Nobody ever really showed her the mirror. In other words, when we look at the mirror today, the mirror in gospel in today is a mirror that says whatever you want. It's not a mirror of correction. It's really a mirror. It's like a magical mirror. Y'all know that mag you know the shows a magical mirror? And you're like, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? You know what I'm saying? And we like that. And, and the mirror is supposed to tell you. See, you want the mirror to tell you, 
You are the most beautiful thing in the world. You are the, you don't want that mirror to say, oh, you know what? Your lipstick is messed up and your eyeliner is messed up at home where you tape too far back. And, you know, you don't want the mirror to show you no errors. You want that mirror, mirror on the wall who's the of of all. And just like that witch, when she, when that mirror said, well, I found another one. She, ah, she want to start slamming the mirror because now she don't think, we want the mirror to tell us how, you know, what's the books they write in the day? How to be the greatest you. We want that mirror to show. But see, to be the greatest you, I got to show you some errors. I got to be able to show you some things that's not right. In other words, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We look at when you look in the mirror of Jesus Christ, he is the image of God. He is what we are called to be. But we have all sinned and fallen short. Say hallelujah. But because of the grace of God, that mirror gives you an opportunity to what? Get that in order. Because the mirror is not trying to, it's not condemning you, it's getting you in order. Without truth, I cannot be corrected. Tell me the truth. And, I, and you have to be very, and how you tell somebody the truth, you got to be, you know, you can't be so tack. You got to be humble. You got to be meek. Because sometimes it's hard. Like she said, what, when she, when she told me, she said nobody really came at her. Like, in other words, nobody ever really came her in the church and let her know. Because she's a very intelligent woman. She's got a degree. She's very smart. But nobody ever came into the church and was going to check her and i tell her let me tell you something see when you sit under uh, i said people love apostle i know y'all love me say y'all love me say y'all love me y'all love me but see when i start checking them people be like huh, huh, i don't know who apostle think he is and, and, uh, but the bible said i'm supposed to check you but i'm not checking you to degrade you i'm not checking you the bottom line if because you maybe you can't see the eyeliner is ran a little too far you know what i'm saying you looking like you japanese but you know you come on Come on, your birth certificate say American black. You ain't, you know, you, you, you don't try to run the eyeliner all the way over here. And maybe you need the mirror just to bring it in just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just, and maybe you don't realize that your eye, what is it called? Uh, the eyelashes, you know, I got some daughters. Sometimes their eyelashes is hanging and they need to. <laughs> and, and they can't see it, but they in front of me trying to look cute and they like, I'm like, I want to say, let me give you a mirror so you can like, just push it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Get you a little glue or something and just stick it in there, you know what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't never seen one of them newsmen on TV and he got a hairpiece on him, but like he need a mirror because he needs to adjust his hairpiece a little bit to the side, you know what I'm saying? He walking around, the hairpiece looking like this. He need a, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about, ladies, when your track kind of... Okay, we're going to keep on pushing it. You know what I'm saying? And you just need a mirror to... Oh, we know... Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? When your attitude needs just to be adjusted a little... Anybody got an attitude that need to be adjusted just a little bit? You know, you snapping out your mouth a little bit. You need to like, yeah, come on, just adjust. Anybody have a... Anybody have a... Oh, come on, a selfish problem. I know I... Sometimes you feel selfish and you need to look in the mirror and, and God says, give and it should be... You need to just... It ain't that you bad. You just need to go in the mirror of Jesus Christ. The mirror of Jesus Christ is not to condemn you. It's the, he said he chases those in whom he loves. What is he saying? I correct those who are my children. Because I see you look toe up from the floor up. But I'm a, when I finish, I'm going to straighten you up. Amen. I want to get that. But see, I, I'm going to Matthew. He said, you will know them by their fruit. He said, God says there should be an external. In other words, when I'm in the mirror, if I'm a doer of the word, the word that I'm doing reflects that I'm bearing something. And somebody ought to know me by the fruit. In other words, don't tell me you were Jesus. Don't tell me you love God. Does your life reflect that? Does your life reflect that you've been in the mirror? Amen. Say, come on, say, I'm getting there. Say, God working on me. Keep on reading. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall now, enter the now kingdom watch of heaven. They got to bear fruit. But then he said, not everybody. Look at somebody say, not everybody. not everybody, but you, but you, come on, preach, speak like, say, but you, you good. Come on, stop playing, say you, you know, you're, you're looking like, some of y'all are like, I don't know, you better you claim life, speak those things or not as though they are, say you, you, you good. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, he said, everybody, you are known by their food, but I got some counterfeits out there that I ain't really been in the mirror, but they got on some Jesus stuff. But God said, okay, because I got a plan. Go ahead. 
but he who does the will of my father he said but he who does the will so watch this he's trying he's connecting the second verse with understanding he said for he who does the will will bear what fruit he said so he who does the will and the will means when you write a will that's the last testament and how many know the new testament is the new will of god Jesus Christ ushered in the New Testament. He, that's why the Bible says it's the New Testament. It's the new will. And he said, he who does the will, he who does what Jesus says, said, what did he say? He who does the will of my Father in heaven. He, he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He didn't say he who go to church. Oh. And say he who sing in the choir. And say he on the dance team. Because you could be in the church in the choir on the dance team, but you ain't looked in the mirror. Up there on the dance team, but your, 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 your tights kind of off, off, off they're out, they out of whack. You know what I'm saying? You're on the dance team, but you're looking crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're on the usher board, but you're cursing people out. Something wrong. You ain't in line. You're not in line. You need to go look in the mirror. Amen? Because if you look in the mirror, you realize you need to bring some fruit of the one that you, that you get a reflection off of. Go ahead. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Here we go. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And many going to begin to declare that they've been in the mirror about what they do. Y'all better get this. Many are going to declare that they've been in the mirror by what they do. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, I, I've been in the mirror. I just feel like doing it for me. You know what I'm saying? You know, it just sound good. Because... Uh, I've been prophesying in your name. Now, you got to understand, these things that they're going to declare are three of the most powerful things you can do in the kingdom. Because to prophesy means to speak the heart of God. Prophecy means that God is allowing you to see in the secret parts of somebody's life. Prophecy, if you read it, for yourself, when they prophesy, it's to tell the secrets of somebody's life that you, they know you don't know, but God is present. And because God is present, they have an opportunity to get their life together. Because guess what? The secret, if you can tell me something I know you don't know, I know somebody present. Somebody is telling you something. Somebody, in other words, somebody in the mirror. Somebody in the mirror done told me some things that you've been hiding deep in your heart. And now when I tell you, I don't want you to look at me because I don't know you. See, I got to be careful of these, some of these, two, these prophets today because a lot of these prophets today want you to look at them. Like they got power. Like they are the ones they can look at. I can't look at your, I don't know nothing about what's in your heart unless God reveal it. Unless the Spirit reveal it. If the Spirit is not revealing it, then that's called a psychic. And how does a psychic get their information? They get their information from demons. Because you once belonged to God. I mean, you once belonged to the devil. So when the psychic say to you stuff like, I know that you like this man tall and, what's your name? He know what you like because he brought it to you. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. They, that's why psychics only speak about where you been. And when they try to tell your future, they only telling your future. They guessing based on where you been. See, I know what you like from where you been. So if I come here and say, oh, I see, I see, I see your money all around you. And I see you working in your hands. On a, and I see, of course I see you because I know what you like. And they want you to start talking because once you start talking, they can get more information. Then next you'll be sitting there crying tomorrow. <laughs> it's Jesus. No, it's a psychic. Because we found out this morning that one of the, a prophet, when he came to, when he came to Paul, he said, "Paul, let me take your belt. When you go to Jerusalem, they are gonna bind you up." And turn you over to the Gentile. See, we don't have no problem. No prophets to tell you. You know, you're about to go through some battles. And guess what? The truth that you're standing on is going to usher you into a valley. We no, we ain't got no suck. We got no prophets. I see a house in the future. I see a job. Of course I'm going to get a job in the future. I'm all I want to work. I see you with a job. Oh, you're right. Come on. If I guess that out of nine or ten people, I'm going to be right because... And you want a better job. Oh, 
<laughs> Some of you be like, oh my God. Because they know most people are dissatisfied with their job anyway. All you got to do is save more money and you got them. I see. I see you about to elevate it. I see more money coming in your future. I perceive that thou art a prophet. Yes, I am. Now give me some money so I can tell you some more. You don't have to pay for the word of God. If you did, then it would eliminate people. But the Bible says the gospel came for the poor. Y'all been hear what I just said? You don't have to pay for the word of God. Because once you put a price on it, you will eliminate people. But the scripture said that he came for the poor. Amen? So, so uh, let's keep on going. What did it say? Have we not prophesied in your name and it's, cast out demons in your name? They say we don't prophesy in your name. That's number one. We spoke in your behalf. And not only have we spoken in your we went to war for you. We went to war in your name. Mm. So now they're speaking for behalf, and now they're saying we fight for God. That's powerful. Because the Bible said we know that the kingdom of God has come when those who stand for him. Am I right? The Bible said you all know we know that the kingdom has come because when the kingdom come, you're gonna be at you're gonna be a direct, you're gonna be a direct <laughs> enemy of the adversary. When the kingdom of God is on land, believe me, when what is the kingdom? When God's way of doing things come, you are in great, you are, <laughs> you become an enemy of the adversary. When you begin to walk, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. When the kingdom come on earth, what happened in the kingdom when the, what happened in the kingdom when the enemy rose up? You better go read. In the kingdom, when Satan, he didn't, the Bible said, he didn't even do it. He thought it in his heart. In his heart, he thought he would exalt himself. And then his heart must have thought real loud. So his attitude must have started affecting other angels. Because y'all think I'm joking. Whatever he thought in his heart, it must have been out loud in his actions because it affected one third of the angels. But the Bible didn't say God got up. God said, Mike, go do this for me, man. Go clean up my house. That's why when Jesus, when they came back bragging about demons, Jesus said, what you bragging about? What you bra I saw that brother get kicked out of heaven like a fly, like an angel, like falling down. That's why I'm amazed of so many Christians talking about voodoo and saying to me, what are you talking about? What is that garbage to God? What do you mean, saying, are you afraid of voodoo? Do you not know that God with one word can wipe out every voodoo priest? Why are you afraid of something you have authority over? My Bible tells me that Jesus had power over all principalities and you have the same spirit. Y'all with me? But that, that's not where I'm going right now. Go ahead, keep going, keep going, keep going. And have we not done many wonders in your name? And, and some interpretation, that word means miracles. So they doing, they said we prophesied, we fought, and we did many miracles in your name. I found out something when I read this. Y'all got to get this. Go ahead. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And then I will declare to them. He said, who will declare? God, Jesus. He said, I'm going to declare to them what? I never knew you. I want you to underline that. They prophesied. Yeah. Cast out demons. And did miracles. But Jesus said, you will know them by their and he said, those who do the will of my father from heaven. But, so Jesus said, there is fruit that you should know them by. But they trying to be known by prophecy. They trying to, oh, y'all going to get, somebody y'all going to get this. They trying to be known by what they doing for God is through the, instead of who they become in God. Y'all better hear. They are trying to be known by what they do for God instead of what God did in them. The mirror deals, well, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. See, they thought they can fool God by doing some things for God. But look, I want you to look at your name and say, but God looks deeper. So he said, I never what? I never knew you. Keep reading. Read the last part. Depart from me. Depart from me. You worker of iniquity. You worker of iniquity. Depart from me. You worker of lawlessness. In other words, what they were working, 
They say we were prophesying. They say that we were casting out demons. They say they were doing miracles. But God said there was no fruit because in their work, in their work, it was work of iniquity. See, what, what, they, what they didn't understand was this. We're going to get there. What they didn't understand was this. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 16, 7. See, what people don't understand, you might be able, there are people going to fool denominations and they're fooling pastors because why they prophesying because yet they're, they're, they're speaking saying God said and then they're what are they doing they saying they know warfare spiritual warfare and got people doing all kind of crazy things in spirit. I saw one y'all ever seen some of that craziness going on man on YouTube pulling bleach on people to my ah, ah. they think the fool should have died they could have died the man pulling bleach y'all think I'm joking he was pulling flour and bleach on people casting out demons to my casting out demons that is foolishness all bleach going to do is change your color it take the dirt out <laughs> a poison you pulling bleach down people's eyes and they sitting there oh, they doing that because the bleach get in their eyes they ain't no demon they are oh, they done went blind because you're trying to cast out a demon man sitting there throwing flowers I'm like man it's a clown show I saw another one he got the woman how many people he the woman how many people have you slept with right, she's like mm. <sighs> show me how you get them she's like I'm like, if she walk like that, she ain't getting nobody. They gonna think she foolish. How you gonna get somebody not walking like you, like, like you, like you doing a runway? But let me tell you why I know it's fake. Because when one of God's children is bound up, God doesn't entertain people to set her free. Matter of fact, in the scripture, there was a demon in the man, and Jesus said, "You better not tear him." He means you better not hurt him while you come out of him. Come out of him and don't tell him. I mean, don't bruise him. Don't hurt him. Release. Because, you know, when the devil, he can be like banging you up. Because the Bible says in the scripture, there was one demon ca causing a man to cast himself in the fire. Cast him. When them demons have you possessed, they try to destroy you like they did them pigs. They ran in and killed every one of them. When a demon is in you, he's going to be trying to hurt you and destroy you. But Jesus said, let me tell you something. When you come out of him... Don't, don't you tell him. Don't you hurt him. So you're sitting up there talking about casting out a demon and humiliating the woman while you're doing it because you're trying to show off that you got some power, you demon. That ain't nothing but a lieutenant telling the cat. That ain't nothing but a lieutenant telling the sergeant, can you leave so we can look powerful so people follow me? He not, the devil don't cast out the devil, but one can relieve another one. In other words, a lieutenant can come on the scene and tell a sergeant, step aside so I can fool the people and they can follow a lieutenant and he still got you bound. Amen. He said, he said, you worker. He said, you talking about doing this, but you're working iniquity. Then what was the problem? What was the real problem in this situation? Read 1 Samuel 16, 7. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, uh -huh. do not look at his appearance. He said, don't look at the appearance. Go ahead. Or by his physical stature. He said, don't look at the appearance. In other words, God says, we need to stop. Y'all know something, man? <laughs> I, I, I've been there too. I ain't gonna lie, I had to get this delivered too. When you're praying for somebody, you want to see them cry. Because you think you did something then. They're like, you walking around look at the power of God Hi. and I read something man God was really moving how you know man people was crying so you judge God moving by emotionalism okay Jesus said you know them by their what but you saying you know them by their tears I'm not saying somebody can't cry to get a breakthrough but you better be able to go deeper than that. You better stop letting that crash stop you and think they delivered. You better bring the word and get them to a place of repentance. You better get them to understand that usually if they're going through something or there's a break in there, there's an entry. Oh, I feel God. There's an entry in their life. You understand. We have entries that we have. And you got a crack or a doorway in your life that you are allowing the enemy to play. And if you don't close that crack or doorway, guess what? After they finish crying, they're going to go right back to being honorary. 
God, show me who it is. Show me where the crack is. That's why I'm, I'm learning to pray. God, he said, when you pray, be like the centurion soldier. God, if you speak a word, I can't deliver this person. But if you speak a word, and if God don't speak a word, and they don't get delivered, that ain't on me. I can't deliver nobody. I can only deliver you if the Spirit of God wants you to be delivered. You say, and let me help you with scripture. When you say, ye a little faith, he called them ye a little faith because faith come by hearing. So if they, in other words, they had a word of God, an impartation of that situation. If you ain't heard a word of God, why are you tussling with that demon of God? Because remember this, when, Peter, when the demon said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Why didn't Paul cast off that demon? He wasn't, that wasn't his job at that point. Think about the story. If Jesus was, he said, I know Jesus and I know Paul. Okay, if he know Paul and Jesus, they walking by. Why didn't Paul stop and cast that demon out? Matter of fact, if you read your Bible, when the women was talking, when, the, when that woman was possessed and she was a suicide, when she was um suicide, what was she? Um, yeah, and she kept saying, mighty men of God. They didn't cast it out the first time. They didn't cast after a while they got tired they got tired she wouldn't shut up they said okay 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 get out there woman and cast up cast that demon out and that's when they got whipped because that was where that man made his money sometimes you got to know god has a plan and a purpose for things and you trying to cast out something but god saying this go a lot deeper than where you think this go this person right here is playing with this and this over here and they need to repent to get that cast out they need to repent because if you care if I let you cast them out they're gonna be seven times worse because they ain't turning around if I let you cast this demon out of them now they're gonna be seven times worse why because when the devil come back because they didn't fill it with the word because they didn't go after God because they didn't and they went right back into the world they're gonna be seven times worse God says I got this just pray for him pray for him I got this amen he said go ahead he said man what do you say do not look at his outward appearance or his physical stature mm -hmm. because I have refused him uh-huh he said don't look at his outward appearance and the fear just snapped because I refused him. But keep going. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. Say it again. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Say it one more time. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Lord, we prophesy. Lord, we cast out. He said, you think you got men looking at you. But you got me twisted. I don't see as man see. I'm going a little deeper. Go ahead. What do you say? For man looks at the outward appearance. Man looking at what you're doing. Man, follow you because you sitting at the top of my head. Cut us out, I'm about And you like boom, and people shaking and all that. And man, thank you. They impressed with you because you sitting there, and, and you talking about get get up, and this and that. But God says, man, see, see, they looking at you and they want to exalt you and lift you up. But He said, I don't see like my man. See what He say? For the Lord looks at the heart. He said, but because I'm looking at your heart. He said, I look at your heart. I know you're doing all this around the church and people are impressed with you thinking you godly but I'm looking at your heart, Aubrey. I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your heart. And, and, and let me tell you something that was funny. I like how mine's one, one, one interpretation says people judge the outward appearance but the Lord looks at man's thoughts and intentions. God says, I know your thoughts and your intentions. I know why you're doing what you're doing. I know why you can say the word all you want to. I know what's in your heart for real. I know you ain't about to give up no sin. I know you can't fool me like you fooling people. They may be impressed in the way you eloquently expound on the word of God. They may be impressed in the way that you want to talk about you love Jesus. But God says, I know your heart. And then it's interesting about God because, I, because watch this. If we go to Matthew 15, which you ain't got to go down and say, he said in Matthew 15, he said, they praise me with their lips and their mouths, but their hearts are far off. He said, they said, Lord, we prophesied in your name. They said, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. They said, Lord, uh, we did many miracles in your name. God said, if man was looking at you and following you like the Simon the sorcerer all over the place while you bewitched him. 
But God says, I know your heart. I know your intentions. You want people to see you. You want to try to use me to get what you want. Hey, y'all with me? Say, God, look. See, that mirror God is talking about is a mirror. It ain't the mirror, mirror on the wall, whose affairs are the wall. It's not the mirror that you're trying to tell, that you want, to, that you want it to tell you how beautiful and magnificent you are. Mirror, mirror on the wall, whose affair is of. Y'all know some of us, we do that in the mirror today. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I know I look good. I know I'm beautiful. But then God says, yeah, you, you, you're beautiful. You look good. But your motives and intentions are nasty. You're disrespectful. You're rude. You're, you got iniquity in your heart. You are lawlessness. Nobody can't tell you nothing. You don't want to obey me. And yet you, but when it's time for somebody to ask you something about the scripture, you can quote all kind of words. God says, you might be impressing everybody else, but I see deeper. Now, remember what God told us this morning. He's not condemning us. He's bringing us to the mirror that we understand what he's looking for. In the mirror, God is looking at the intent and the motive. For you to understand that it's the same thing in the New Testament, because you might say, well, that's 1 Samuel. That's how it was in the book of 1 Samuel. Well, hey, look. Go to Hebrews 4, 13. That's why I stay humble. On my knees. Why? Because y'all want to give pastor, uh, well, it was my birthday, but some people try to switch it to a pastor appreciation. But see, I stay on my knees and stay humble. Why? Because I'll be looking in that mirror. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, my God. I'll be looking in that mirror and be like, God, if it wasn't for you, if you were not the covering, boy, oh, my God. If you saw some of the thoughts that the enemy was throwing past a brother of mine, you'd be like, that brother right there needs some delivering. But no, God got me. I'm in the mirror. He's cleaning and he's washing me up. And amen. And he got me covered. See? Amen. So go ahead and read. What it say? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Uh -huh. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. Listen. Say it again. There is no creature that is hidden from his sight. Everybody say, that's me. That's New Test Testament. No matter where you go, you are not hidden. You and I, let me say not you, you and I are not hidden from the sight of God. So you were in church, and the one who knows the intents and motives of man, you were in church acting like, and God looking at your heart, and you're like, man, I'm so tired of this. I wish they could. And God looking at you like, they, and, they, and, 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 and he's saying apostle is so crazy because he's looking at you like you really love the word. And you sitting here and you can't wait till you go call Jojo. And then you see the pray, people praising like they're going crazy. And God in heaven them pulled down the drapes. And we like, they must be really, they must really love the Lord. No. Nah, they just going through the emotions. God says, I'm going. He said, for my sons and daughters, I want you to understand. Don't play games with me in that mirror. I know what's going on on the inside. I heard, I think I was, I was, uh, da, uh, Minister uh, Davon said, I don't know if it was somebody told me that don't be like Adam, the first Adam who took leaves. Don't try to cover yourself with your own religious spin. Don't try to cover yourself it would be better for you to uncover yourself and let and tell God, man, God, I'm undone and I'm, I got thoughts that I'm going through in my mind. God ain't mad. He wants you to be honest. He wants you to be like the woman at the well. Where your husband? I don't have none. Tell him the truth. God, right now I'm struggling in my mind. I, I ain't trying to front before nobody, God. I'm struggling in my mind right now. But I know you got me. I know you got me. I'm not, now don't get, don't get it twisted. I'm not going to start acting like I don't have God. I know he got me. For he who, for he who, has, for he who has saved me, will be gonna he for he who has begun a good works in me is faithful but i gotta be real with god i can't be looking in the mirror and god showing me about my attitude and yet i'm trying to dress i'm trying to cover my attitude with trying to be religious can we get an amen 
I, I need to be. When Isaiah, when God filled the temple, Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. When we get in the presence of God, it's like a mirror. But watch this. When Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips, whatever Isaiah's state was did not change God's purpose for him. See, when you... God, all, see, you ain't got to tell God all, when he, his purpose, when God, God's purpose for you was already established, even in your mess. So what does that mean? Stop trying to act like you this super, uh, super person that you made everything all good. No, the truth is you was dirty and unclean. And God told Isaiah, look at, watch this. I'm going to get, Isaiah had an unclean, he had an unclean mouth, which represented an unclean heart. Peter had an unclean heart, which he needed a rooftop experience. Y'all ain't hearing me. Peter needed a roof rock because he had prejudice and some and, and issues in his heart towards, still toward the Gentiles. And God had to tell Peter, that which I have clean, let no man say it's unclean. And Peter couldn't admit, you can't minister to somebody, as, you can't minister to those that your heart has issues against. If you got prejudice in your heart against white people, God has to give you a roof time experience. If you got prejudice in your heart against men, God has to give you a roof time. If you got prejudice in your heart against women, if you got some type of racism or anger against people, God has to give you a roof <laughs> experience. And while he got you on the roof, he got your ministry ready to knock it on the door for you. While he was dealing with Peter on the roof, his ministry was coming knocking on the door for him. See, if God, see, it's a terrible thing to try to go minister without your roof time experience. Because you're going to be fake about what you're doing because you're going to be trying to do something, but in your heart you don't like them. Because God knows the motive and attention. And a lot of times we're not going to do something. When we do something for people we don't like, it's because we're thinking in our heart. Oh, I'm going to get something for this person right here. You know how the world is. The world be like this. They don't really like their artists, but they'll do something because they're hoping their artists help them get a record deal. Their motives and intentions are not pure. You want to have Bible study with homeboy, but because you really like him. That's impure motives. Y'all don't, okay, don't want to talk to me tonight. Well, we're going to talk anyway. I want to have, I pick, out of all the women in the church, I pick Sister Rose. Anyway, why you pick Because I really like Sister Rose. And so therefore, every time see somebody need help, why am I running to Sister Rose? Because my motive and intentions are not right. I got some fleshly desires in here right here. No, and doggone well, you ain't going to do the same thing. Because that's why I be talking to sisters and brothers. They be like, no, we are but friends. I say, you friends, huh? I say, so you're going to ask him to do the same thing that you ask another brother to do. And you're going to sit there for three hours talking to him and giggling in his face like another brother. Man, you better stop your heart. The heart is wickedly and deceitful. You better stop letting your heart play with you because you know doggone well you ain't going to have them same feelings if another brother do that. You like that brother. That's why when he bring you food, you like <laughs> <laughs> trying to touch his hand when he give you the plate. <laughs> why you touching him, boy? Boy. Done got your hair done. Nails done. Late at night, you talking about, oh, this ain't nothing. This little thing, it ain't nothing. Better stop playing games with that heart. God knows the heart of man is wicked and deceitful. Y'all know, I be coming at him. I be coming at my door. Somebody says, y'all better stop playing. I ain't looking at you. And you trying to convince me. No, you can't convince me. I know the heart. And I know, yeah, you, yeah, you would. You will do it to a certain degree. But to deny your intentions and motive is falsehood. God would rather for you to say, yeah, I like him, I love him, and that's why I want him to bring, but it's not good for me to be in that situation right now, and that's why I'm not going to have him bring it, because if I have him bring it, my heart is pounding like a heart attack, waiting for I'm looking out the window every five minutes. Is it here yet? Is it here yet? I done made a song. Is it here yet? <laughs> 
I can't wait. When your other brother come, you went. Dog, he here. I like that. Is he here yet? <laughs> Playing them games. But the Bible says the heart is dreadfully wicked and deceitful. God, it don't change. It's still the same way. And when God begins to renew the heart, the new heart begins to move according to the word of God, not according to our emotions and our feelings. Can I get an amen? And the word of God says put no confidence in your... The word of God says flee from you for... So the word of God lets you know right off the bat, baby girl, baby boy, don't you play with that. Oh, we, we good, right? Say, I'm learning. Because God knows the heart. And he, he got me in the mirror because he cleaned up my heart. He, ain't, he cleaned my heart, but I need it cleaned up. I ain't going to lie. I need it cleaned up because I need to look more like him, less like me. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. But all things are naked and open. Ooh. He said all things are naked and open. All intentions and motives are naked and open. You and I, not you, I and you, you and I, we can't fool God. That brother, they got that $150 line. We talking about getting a $50 line. He ain't fooling God. He fooling you. All the people lying, he fooling you. But God know he ain't doing that under his name. Got you paying for an extra blessing. Because I remember one time I went to a church. This thing, went, I'm like, me and my wife were looking at this cat. He ain't come nowhere near me, me and my wife. He ain't come. That cat was doing it. He like avoided us like a plague. I'm like, this cat won't even come over here. Because he was like, he started out, oh, right now, uh, God wants somebody to give $150. And if you give $150, uh, God is going to open up heaven. Uh, and God is going to move in your behalf. Uh, and God going to pour you out a blessing. And the people, y'all should have saw it. And people was running around borrowing money. <laughs> if they would have just waited. Because after a while, the preacher, the preacher told on himself. Because after a while, he went from 150 to 100. You could have got a discount on that blessing. Then he went from 100 to 75. I said, this must be a retail blessing. I'm a, this must be one of the ragtag blessings. And at the end, he said, well, I tell you what, just give what you got and God will meet you. I'm thinking in my mind, if I had, you just stayed there and waited, you could have gave that dollar before you went and got in debt $149. Y'all think, think I'm joking. That was a clown show going on in the house of God. Clown show. But they were doing it in the name of Jesus. But see, Jesus knew the heart and the intent was greed. And though it fooled, why is God teaching his disciples this? Why is he teaching y'all this generation this? Because he's saying this is what's going on in the land and you need to have this knowledge so you can discern foolishness from me. God is good. God is good. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Let us know the difference. Let us know the difference. See, if I don't have the word, I don't know the difference. And I can be calling something God. Oh, that's prophesying. Oh, I saw him do miracles. Oh, I saw him doing this. And God is saying, I never, not that I knew him and now I don't know him. He said, I never knew them. The work is of iniquity. Why? Because while you were looking at the external, God says, I knew what was going on in the heart. And then their heart was full of lawlessness. But, that, but Jesus said, what I want you to understand is, stop looking at what they're trying to do. Do they bear fruit? And the way you can tell somebody bear fruit, he said, know those who labor among you. Observe their life, especially through times of adversity. Do they take sideline deals? Do their tongue always flow out with lies? 
do they have envy and jealousy in their heart constantly? Now, I'm not saying we're not in a battle. Come on, we're in a battle. We're in the mirror. And in the mirror, it's pointing out error. But it's also pointing out how you clean it up. Amen? But you got to clean it up. But see, when you don't want to be in the mirror because some like darkness, because their deeds are evil, he said, you better know they like that money they're making. He said, they, he said they, 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 they greet like, like greedy dogs. They, they love the money. Every, every man is going about his own, trying to build his own dream and vision. They're no longer building my kingdom in my body anymore. Because to build my vision, you got to decrease. To build my vision, you got to be willing to lose your life, to gain life. To build my vision, you got to be willing to exalt and esteem another higher than yourself. It ain't about mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. And you sitting there waiting for them to tell you how wonderful you are. It's mirror, mirror on the wall. Thank you for pointing out that area where I'm out of line. So I can become lined up with the word of God so God can get some glory out of my life. It's a terrible thing to have said in church most of your life and still go to hell. And people say, but they did this in the church. They were on the usher board. And they was doing all this stuff for the church. God said, yeah, they fooled you because you were looking at their size and they were looking at their works. But I was looking at their intention and motive. They did it because they wanted to catch the eye of the pastor because they wanted a position. They did it because they wanted to catch the eye of a female. Or they did it to catch the eye of a male. They wanted to show off how great they are in God instead of showing how great God is in them. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm serious. Self-indulged testimonies and situations where you're trying to show off you instead of showing off God. But say, God, I want to decrease. Come on, say, God, I want to decrease so you can increase. Because I don't trust my heart. I'm just being honest. This heart is wicked. And you can tell them. Let me tell you something about them people. Some of them, They hate correction. They hate correction. I see. I know some of them. They hate. If you come and tell them and correct them. Oh my God. They will snap on you. Talk about the sister. They will go off. They hate correction. And what you. Watch it. Well, when you know the word. The Bible says. If I cannot correct you. Then you are a bastard. You are none of mine. They hate when somebody step to them and tell them that they wrong. But they don't mind when you pat them on the back and tell them they doing. They want all accolades, but they don't want nothing. But God says he chased it though. In other words, in the mirror, he said, I got to be it. You're not perfect and I'm not perfect. He said, I got to be able to show you where you're at that I can help you grow. I don't want to grow, God. I'm good. And as soon as you say something to them to correct them, they, oh my God, you done. Lord, they was down with you. They, they like Pete, like Paul. Paul said, you would have plucked out your eyes for me. You love me. But when I told you the truth, when I began to tell you the truth about yourself, you like him. He ain't nothing but a, he a fake apostle. He ain't no that cat right there. He ain't no man of God. He, he. I done had people, y'all know what I'm talking about. I done had people come to the church ministry. People uh, prophesy. They would prophesy, apostle, you I'm right, I'm right, Pastor, I mean, Father Barber. They don't promise that we're going to grow in this and that. As soon as you don't agree with them no more, the same mouth they prophesied that we was going to expand and grow, God going to destroy that ministry. I'm like, God, but you just told us a week ago we was going to grow. God changed his mind that fast? You know? I would have thought he would at least give us a whooping first. You know? I'm, am I right, Prophet? They was, man, they was up there prophesying, God ain't here no more, and God, I'm like, wait a minute, but you was just prophesying a week ago in my face talking about God going, I see the Lord expanding you. I see the Lord taking you. So he changed his mind in three days because I told you something you ain't like. So what I want you to do for me is don't prophesy to me at all because your tongue seems to move along. Your tongue seems to move according to your emotions. And I don't want no prophet whose tongues move according to their emotions. Because when you're feeling good, you'll be like, I, I see blessings. But somebody make you mad, you all going to die in a week. 
Now, one week you home, you saw Blake, you sitting there telling all your friends how blessed you are. And because you so tired, he told me I'm going to die. Now you home crying and depressed and oppressed because they don't told you you're going to die. <laughs> Amen. He said, we are naked before him, uncovered. Nobody in this room, can, me included, we cannot hide our intentions or our, emo our intentions and our motive before God. So we need to get to a place to be real with God. If you don't like somebody, you need to be real about it. God, I'm having a problem. Don't accept it, but be real about it. God, I'm having a problem dealing with this person right here. I need your help. I need the mirror. God, I'm having an issue obeying you right here. I know I'm supposed to do this. I know what you want me to do. I'm confessing to you that I need your help to get this done. I know it's wrong. I ain't trying to, I know it's wrong, God. And I need you to help me get in the order. Can I get an amen? The Bible says he desires truth in the inward parts. He wants you to be truthful. Why? Because when you're truthful, people can deal with truth. Can I get an amen? Just be. God said, let me just deal. That's why he, he dealt with the woman. He said, woman, where your husband at? She said, I have him. He said, you have spoken the truth. And from that point on, he began to deal with her. Because sometimes our brokenness is hidden behind all the lies. It's hidden behind all the insecurities. It's hidden behind all the pain. And we got to be willing to deal with the brokenness. See, sometimes we, it's, it's, it's real. Come on, I'm not lying. It's real out there. It's hidden behind the molestation. It's hidden behind insecurities. It's hidden behind the fear of people maybe in it. You don't want nobody to really see you. Because you, it's not that you're a bad person. It's just that you... You, some people feel ashamed. So there are women who feel ashamed because she was molested, even though it was not her fault. And she, and she was innocent, but she feels shame. There are some people who feel shame about having an STD. They feel shame about this and that. Man, you got to stop feeling shame. You are a new creature. All old things are passed away. You, they can't judge you. When you get past people judging you, you're going to be good. Amen? All I care about is I'm being right with God. If you don't get, if you can't forgive, if you can't, ju if you want to condemn, because judgment means they want to see you punished. They want to see you destroyed. I don't want to see nobody punished and destroyed because guess what? If I want to see you punished and destroyed, I better get ready to get in line and get punished and destroyed with you. Because I'm, I'm guilty someplace else. Too. Amen. That's why Jesus said, let him without sin cast the first stone. You know why none of them cast that stone? Because if any one of them would cast that stone, they would have been stoned next. They didn't, st they didn't cast that stone for her. They didn't cast that stone because they knew if they pass that judgment, they got to get in line to be judged. So, so you, we need to watch what we're saying to people. We need to watch how we're condemning people because the stone that you throw is going to be thrown back at you. Man, I'm going to tell you, some people get that self-righteous, man. You need to quit. It ain't your righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ. And you receive that righteousness by a gift. You didn't earn that righteousness because you was a good person. You didn't earn, when you looked in the mirror, you didn't earn that righteousness because everything was, because your makeup and everything was in line. Matter of fact, when you looked in the mirror, you was toe up on the floor up. But God loved you anyway, and he was willing to straighten up your makeup even though you, even though you kicked into the soil. So when you see somebody else messed up, I dare you talk about them when God straightened up yours. Be ready to give them an answer about the one who gave you your extreme makeover. Oh, I know a makeup artist, girl. I know a makeup artist. I know somebody who will fix your tape, all baby. I know somebody who will get you. Come on, come on over here. I know somebody who will get you in order. But we sitting there clowning and talking about them and slandering them. And God said, what you doing? Wait a minute. You act like you fixed up yourself. You act like you weren't no sinner. You act like you clean. Yo, watch this. He said, you're going to know them by their fruit. Not by their works. Because guess what? You can say, I'm doing everything good with God, but your heart is so evil. Your heart is so evil. You don't have no forgiveness in your heart. You always, you always, uh, you, the Bible says, keep no record of wrong. You always remember somebody else is wrong. You talk about, but God, I do this. I'm, I'm always doing it. And God said, your heart is so evil. But God, I prophesied. 
God, I rap for you. I sing for you. I dance for you. God said, I never knew you. In your heart, you had no forgiveness. There was no fruit in your heart. Well, God, I was, doing, I was trying to do everything to make you please. You did everything but love other people. You did everything but forgive other people. You're rebellious. They tell you to do, people tell you to do something, you won't do it. You're rebellious. God says, there is something wrong with your heart. And I'm going to tell you something. No matter what you think you're doing for God, God looking at your heart, please don't let God tell you he don't know you. Because in your heart, you have no love for nobody. You live off of your own self-righteousness. You think you good because you do this. I don't lie. I don't do this. I don't do that. You ain't, what mirror are you looking in? Are you forgiving? Are you patient? Are you humble? Can people tell you what to do? Or are you prideful? And nobody, you're going to do what you want to do no matter what. Okay. Well, guess what? It ain't going to be, don't worry about the ones you're doing it to. You did that to God. You didn't do it to the ones, when you, when you won't do, when you won't line up with people, you're not disobeying everybody. You're disobeying God. God teaching us tonight. He said, come to the mirror. Come on. Stop playing. Stop saying, stop dressing yourself. And let me dress you. Let me, get, let me get your heart right. Say, get my heart right, God. Because we can't hide nothing from them, right? Because this is what the Bible says. Go to Matthew 15, around the 18th verse. Let's go there, 17th verse. We're naked. I'm with you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me too. God talking to me too. But he's talking to us not. He said, come in the mirror. I got to show you some issues with your heart. And see, Paul, most people think they're not trying to come to the mirror. You, you got people, they never come to the front to repent. They never, know why? Because they in their own mirror, they think they so perfect. In their own mirror, they believe I'm, I'm right with God. Even though in their own mirror, they got hatred against another sister. God, show them in their own mirror, you don't like this person. You disrespectful over here. But they be like, well, I'm good. You in trouble. You in so, I'm praying for you. You in so much trouble. Because you can't even see your own makeup out of line. You can't even see that your makeup is not lined up. Because you're trying to operate in your own righteousness. God wouldn't be preaching this if there was not us in the audience. He's talking to us. He said, I love you enough to let you know that you're walking around trying to get up into heaven off your own righteousness. And you're using and you're saying my name, but I don't even know you because you won't let me deal with your heart. Read it. Yeah, Matthew, no, Matthew chapter... 15 verse 18, 7 or 17, go from 17. Matthew chapter 15, verse 17. Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? He said, see, the Pharisees was coming at Jesus Christ for, the, uh, for his disciples. And his disciples didn't wash their hands. And those old righteous Pharisees was like, yeah, your disciples, they are unclean. They eat with their hands all dirty. Amen. Your disciples, man, they don't keep up with the traditions. And there's two different places in the Bible where they were coming at them. And I'm going to give you both of them. One was about the washing of the, the, the hands. And one was about um, eating, eating something, eating. I don't, let me go with the first one because my mind don't remember the second right now. But when they came, and it's the and, and religious people, you ever notice they notice everything 
that you how mess how unclean you are they notice everything about how you ain't how you not right with God and Jesus said uh, what, the, what, what you put in your mouth comes out through your butt so it ain't about something clean what, 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 what you put in your mouth because I'm going to tell you if you picked up a cookie out for all y'all that think that you're going to be a little more spiritual because the way you eat you don't eat to become more spiritual you just eat to become more healthy because what you put in your mouth if you eat all natural foods that's not going to make you more spiritual but it will make you more healthy and it will help you to be around a lot longer can I get an amen it'll make you feel a lot better I'm just being real when you eat in the right way you got more energy when you eating donuts every Monday morning going by the Dunkin Donuts and you eating it's affecting your body but spiritually you're going to be okay you're just going to be in a sick body can I get an amen because what you eat it can't affect you spiritually because you, you go right to the bathroom and so if you think like some, 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 like some religious people do you sitting there talking about I'm not going to eat this and I'm not going to eat that <laughs> it's kind of funny because whatever you eat if it got any spirituality you better not go to the you better clamp down so you can stay holy keep it inside you so you can stay holy because you don't want to let out that Holy Ghost out your, in the bathroom. Because you're thinking, man, I'm eating this and that. I feel like I, I, the Holy Spirit is growing inside because I'm eating spinach and greens. And, but when you go to the bathroom, you better, not, you better not go to the bathroom because that's the only way you're going to. But he said, that, that stuff coming right out your drop. It's coming right out you. But watch, go ahead, keep reading. Verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth uh -huh. comes from the heart, and they defile a man. He said, now what comes out of the mouth, they proceed from the heart. And that's what defiles a man. It's what's inside of you, not what you, it's what's inside of your heart. And that's why Jesus said, that's why the word says that God does not judge the outward appearance, but he judges the heart because it's what's come out of the heart that defiles a man. An enemy knows how to decorate the outside so you won't pay attention to the heart. He knows how to preach a gospel to make you think you look good on the outside, but your heart still ain't been changed. They praise me with their lips and mouth, but their hearts are far off because they teach from a doctrine that does not deal with the heart. They teach from a doctrine that tries to build you up by what you obtain and what you have but that doctrine let me tell you something if you smoke like the, like the rapper said if you smoke weed poor you're going to smoke weed rich if you are a liar and you got money you're going to be a liar when you don't have money those things if, you, if, if you're rude and arrogant before you're married you're going to be rude and arrogant when you get married why? Because those, a husband don't change the heart. A wife don't change the heart. Money, don't, money may change your financial status, but it don't change how you treat people. If you was rude before you, if you was rude and you ain't have, if you were unforgiving without money, you're going to be unforgiving with money. God says, I want to deal with your heart. And they thought, well, we prophesied. We prophesied. We cast out demons. They tried to impress God by the things they were doing externally. And God says, but I know your intentions and your motive in your heart. God says, you don't love the thing I died for. He read. Verse 19. Uh -huh. For out of the heart. Proceeds. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Out of the heart does what? proceeds evil thoughts so out of our heart we have evil thoughts say I need the mirror somebody go in there um, go give me the mirror out of that room 
He said, out of the hearts, huh? Yeah, this, uh, he, he judged them for picking corn on the seventh. Yeah. See, I need the mirror because out of the heart comes what? So I got some evil thoughts in my heart, so I need to go in the mirror. Why? Because the mirror has a twofold message. It has a twofold purpose. Come here. Let me now. Hold up. Come here. You don't want to mess with you, girl. Come on up here. The mirror has a twofold message. I want you to keep reading this one. The mirror shows me that out of the heart, the what? Out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. So when I look into the word, I realize that my thoughts don't line up with the. Y'all better be with me. I realize that my thoughts don't line up with the mind. Of, the Bible says, bring every thought into the obedience of what? Christ Jesus. So when my thoughts don't line up with the word, I have to fix up my thoughts by, by bringing my thoughts into the obedience of the word of God. Come on, somebody. God said, let me clean up your thoughts. But if you refuse to let God show you that you got evil thoughts, or you, and what are evil thoughts? When you go around hating your sister, when you go around being envious and jealousy, when you go around in your heart and you think you're better than everybody else. Evil thoughts in the heart are thoughts that are contrary to the word of God. But you got people that say, I'm not going to confess my heart. I'm not, I'm, my heart is good. And every time you hear, you are here, like you are here a sermon today, and God is dealing with the heart, and you will sit there and say, that's for everybody but me. He ain't talking to me. He ain't talking. Even though the Bible says, the day you hear the word, harden not your But you will say, that's not for me. I'm good. But God says, I have searched your heart through this year, and I have seen in your heart this year that you have had all, every time somebody tell you something, and every time anything go the way you want them to go, you had an all against this sister, you had an all against this brother, you had an all against this person, every time things didn't go the way you want them to go. He said, you thought I was showing them you. I was, you thought I was showing you the issue the other person. I was showing you the bitterness and anger in your own heart. Every time somebody didn't do what you think they should do, every time they didn't go, you got bitter, you got angry, you did not act the way the word act. You act in yourself. And you thought you were entitled to them to be begging you or entitled to them to treat you a certain type of way. But do you not understand that I was despised and rejected but yet I opened up my mouth. But God, that's okay because you're teaching me. Because my makeup a little crooked. And my hair do it's a little bit off. Give me the other one. Out of the heart proceeds murders. Murder. Woo! You murdering people in your heart. Saying that God can't forgive them. That God don't love them. That God says that they ain't righteous. Saying God don't care. That they, that you murdered them in your heart. Thinking devaluing devaluing them. And the love that God has for them in your heart. They bitter. They, they had no good. They just in that. But yet, God gave you grace and, and mercy, but yet you say you will give nobody else grace and mercy. God said, get in the mirror. Put your, when, I, when I say get in the mirror, just say your own name. Get in the mirror, Aubrey. Oh, uh, let me say it again. When I say get in the mirror, say your own name. Some of y'all ain't going to say it because you told that pride in you, that, that pride in you so puffed up. You ain't going to say it because you're so prideful. You won't even, not who, my name? Do you not know who I am? I am, I am that I am. You are a sinner saved by grace. And you are still growing in God. And you are still being washed and cleansed by the word of God. I've been saved 22 years and yet God is still washing and cleansing. God is still perfecting. You've been saved eight years and think you know everything? You already perfected? Then you might as well. God need to come just take you to heaven. Since you that perfect, just walk. Be like Enoch. We, you know, right? Just walk straight. Just walk straight. In. You so perfect. Just walk straight into heaven. I don't know about you, but I was saved by grace. Jesus had to die for me to be in. To be, to, before me go before the Father, he had to die for me. Amen. So I know 
I'm not going to be the man that's going to walk into the church and say, you know what, God, I did this. I fast on the seventh day. I do all these. I'm going to be the one walking in the church and say, God, you know what? I'm a sinner saved by your grace. Every day I thank you for your grace. Every day I thank you for your mercy. Every day I thank you for your goodness. Every day I thank you for your kindness. Every day I thank you for your long suffering. Every day I thank you for the blood. Every day I thank you for how you deliver me. Every day I thank you how you watch over me. Every day I thank you for how you strengthen me. Every day I thank you for how you pour into me. For it's not by my might, not by my power, but every day I thank you for your spirit. Because I'm a wretch, undone but saved by the grace of God and transferred by the truth of God. So now, say, I'm going to stop murdering. I got to get it right, God. I'm going to murder. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it what? So he said, I got to change the way you murder people. God know he knows some of us murdering people because you're bitter. So he has to heal your bitter heart. Keep going. Out of the heart proceeds adulteries. Adultery adultery and some of us think adultery is just physical sex adultery a lot of times taking place in your mind I remember one time I had I told y'all this one time I was laying in the bed and I was man I, I don't know that month that time I was going through a lot of battle in my head man I was like I was having these thoughts man it was coming and then I found myself for a moment entertaining these thoughts. So I had to go tell my wife, I said, babe, I committed adultery. She looked at me like, huh? I said, yeah, I've been having this warfare in my mind. See, I believe you got to expose yourself. I had to go let my wife know that I was struggling in my mind. Because in God's word, I'm still committing adultery. Because Jesus said, if you look on a woman and you lust in see, if you think you look on a woman and you lust in and you don't, you're not committing adultery. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you're committing adultery. So I had to go tell my wife. My wife just gave me a hug and said, baby, let me pray with you. We pray. I was glad. Because <laughs> I sure was thinking, man, how am I going to say this, Lord? See, I know some of y'all judging. Y'all are like, oh, I knew he wasn't. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I got washed. And cause to, 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 to get rid of the thoughts of committing adultery, he said, think on these things. If there be any truth, if there be any, if there be any what? Any peer, any, any good report, if there be any virtue on you. All I had to do was eat the word of God to begin to get my mind renewed. It, was, it ain't overnight. Sometimes I'm still bad. I'm out the brain because I know, that, I know it's not my thoughts. First, I know, first of all, I know it's not my thoughts. Because I know that the Bible says that the enemy is always shooting fiery darts. It's not my thought. So I have to live up the shield of faith to block the fiery darts of the enemy. See, half of y'all don't know is that the thoughts that's coming through your mind are not yours unless you receive them. That's why the Bible says a man is carried away by his own lust. Why? Because you let, you let the thoughts begin to grow. And now you got to let God uproot those thoughts. I know, I bet you got to let God tear it up. And yes, your mind can be renewed. And yes, you can be... And your mind can be what? But you got to let God, you got to get in the mirror. So I got to get in the mirror. And I got to let God get my makeup right. Amen? Say, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Go, what's the next one? Out of the heart proceeds fornication. Fornication. He said adultery is when you're married. Fornication is when you're out there having sex and you're not married. Fornication can be done in the mind too. Amen? See, we don't like that mirror. I remember, I, I, let me tell you what happened one time. I remember somebody looking in the mirror, right? And they was like, man, they was coming down on the female. They was coming down on this female because she had a baby. And like, oh, man, she done had a baby. Look at that. Them girls, them women out there having babies. I said, wait a minute. Hold up. But you was having sex. And see, then you got the virgin trying to say, I'm not like everybody else. Hold up. The Bible says five of those virgins didn't go into the kingdom. Oh, they don't want, we don't want to talk. Five of those virgins. So just because you're a virgin don't give you no ticket to go into the kingdom of God. Just because you ain't having sex don't give you no ticket to go into the kingdom of God. You're not supposed to have sex. 
So don't you go putting your nose down on somebody else because you ain't having sex because guess what? Guess what? The bottom line, yes, she might have had a baby, but she gave God her heart. You ain't gave God your heart. Why? How God know you ain't gave her? Because you judging her. You condemning her, wanting her to be punished because of her sin like you haven't sinned. Say, oh, see, I'm getting in that mirror. Say, by the time the night I'm with, I'm be looking good. <laughs> I'm going to have my eyeliner on. My... Come on, y'all going to look good after the night. When I say the mirror, say your, last, say your name, Mira Alberry. When I say mirror, say your last name, Mira. Come on, claim. You know you need that mirror. You need that mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Jesus. I know you're right. Woo! Jesus is. Ain't none greater. Ain't we sing the song, none greater. Amen. So I'm looking at the mirror. And remember what I said, the mirror is pointing out the errors, but the same mirror is bringing the correction. So if I, I look in the mirror to find out why. The mirror showed me that my hair was crooked, but the same mirror lets me know I need to put it on straight. The word of God will point out your errors, but it's there also to straighten out your heart. Isn't that good news? It's not there to condemn you. And that's why the Bible says, let him who said they have not sinned. He said, if you say you have not sinned, you are a liar. Okay, what else to say? Out of the heart proceeds thefts. Stealing. He said, but when I'm in the mirror, I know I'm a little rogue. Be still in time at work. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Did I? Stealing on your income taxes. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to talk about it? Okay. Stealing. But he told me when I look in the mirror, he going to teach me how to give instead of steal. Come on, church. He going to teach you how to not be so stingy and give instead. Because when you become a giver, you, don't, you, you stop stealing. Go ahead. Out of the heart proceeds false witnesses. Ooh. All you false witnesses. What is a false witness? Somebody putting somebody else's name out there falsely. Slandering. What happened to covering your sister and your brother? Even if they were wrong, aren't you supposed to cover them? That's what love do. Right? False man, false who always got your mouth. We always got our mouth on somebody else. False witnesses. We are supposed to be a witness for the kingdom. You, but you and I are supposed to be a witness for the kingdom. Not witnessing against other people. And being false. Now he didn't say witnesses, he said false witnesses. What is a false? Somebody who is saying falsehood against others. Amen. Keep on going. Out of the heart proceeds blasphemies. Blasphemy. 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 We use na God's name in blasphemy. Not giving reverence. Blasphemy. Not giving reverence. What else? He said these things come out of the heart. So God says... We look at the outward appearance. Anybody ever looked at the outward appearance and met somebody and found after you got to get to know them, some of these things was coming out their heart? Anybody looked in the, on the outside and you thought they was a good person? And, I mean, you look, oh, this is great. And then you found out they was a, uh, a backbiter or a fornicator. And there was an issue in their heart. Just like it was an issue in my heart. And God wants to straight. God don't want to throw them away. He just needs somebody to bring him to the mirror. Amen? God needs somebody to show him the mirror. He said, be always ready to give an answer. Show them that there's hope in the mirror. Because guess what? 
Is there any ex? Is, is there, are, are there any ex? Anybody who used to be slanderous in here? Is there anybody in here who used to be thieves and hit, stole something that wouldn't belong to you? Is there anybody in here who used to be fornicators? The Bible says that we have all sinned. So that means nobody in this room is, are there any ex, is anybody here was a sinner? If your hand down, that means you a liar. That means you a sinner too. Because I asked the question, are there anybody in here that's a sinner? That used to be a sinner. And since the Bible says we have all sinned, and if you say that you have, I'm not calling you a liar. The Bible says that we have all sinned, and if you say you have not sinned, then you are a liar, which makes you a sinner. Amen? Since we have all sinned, and we all needed what? We all needed grace. Amen? If you needed grace, raise your hand. We all needed Jesus Christ. Amen? We needed the Christ to pay our price. Because the wages of sin is what? So when we look, we receive the seed of Christ that makes us what? Everybody say blessed. Because he said, in his seed shall bless all nations. But in that seed, we look in through the mirror of that seed, as that seed began to straighten out some issues in our heart. And that's why the Bible said, we are washed and cleansed by the word. The word cleanses us. Do we get this today? It's a good word. It's a word for me and all of us. It's a word for the, it's, it's a word for the sons and daughters of God. Because the sons and daughters of God, you're going you're gonna to change the world. Because God said, there's a lot of people in the church, all they care about is mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest? I am God. I'm the fairest of the all. Now, God, give me a husband, give me a wife, give me a car, give me, give me, give me whatever I want, give me what I need, give me what I want. And God says, that's not, the mirror is not, that's not what the mirror is for. The, the mirror is to straighten you out. And I'll add things to you, but the mirror is to straighten you out. Because if I gave you something without your heart being straightened out, you wouldn't know how to treat it. There's some women in this church that you're talking about want a man you I'm going to tell you something. I know someone in this church. You, the last thing you need is a man. I've seen how you treat people. You don't need no man. I've seen how you treat people. You got a little while ago. Some men I've seen in this church. No, you got a little while ago before you start talking about getting somebody because you need God to clean. Because if you treat your husband the way you treat people when they make you mad, Ooh, I feel that brother will be here. He'll be on the altar every Sunday. He'll be crying living with a tyrant like you. So God says, don't worry about it. I got something for you in the future. I just need you to come to the mirror right now. Amen. I need you to come to the mirror. Because I want to get you ready for my purpose. The Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Not your purpose. I want to get you ready for my purpose. And to know my purpose, you got to come in the mirror so you can see how I live. See, what's interesting about it, watch this. When you're in the mirror long enough, just follow me. When you're in the mirror, do what I'm doing. After a while, when you're in the mirror, turn your head, just follow me what I'm doing. After a while, when you're in the mirror, you find yourself doing exactly whatever the person in the mirror that you're watching when you're in the mirror you find yourself and people begin to say you know what you look just like the image you look just like the image when you're in that mirror you say oh i see i can see you looking and then they begin to say what they said about jesus you know what they called the apostles they said to the apostles you know what we call them christians why because they live in a life they look just like Jesus. Come on, somebody. They looking just like Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And the problem with some of us is you saying Jesus, but do what you want to do. You saying Jesus, but you looking crazy. Jesus doing this, and you looking crazy. You looking like, and Jesus say, I don't even know you. Jesus talking about doing this, do something different. And you sitting there doing that. 
You just say, I don't know you. You don't look like me. But Jesus said, I came that you may, he said, follow me. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Why? You got to be able to follow Jesus. You got to be able to follow Jesus. Because when people see, they don't, God don't want them to see you. The problem is, you think, you think you the image people want to see. No, no longer I live. Come on, stay with me, Mira. No longer I live, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live. The life I now live. Turn with me, Mira. See, the Bible says, I've been spending so much time with God that when you see me, you see God. I've been spending so much time with God. When you see me, you see God. When you make me bad, when you make me mad, all I can do is forgive you. All I can do is humble my wife because that's what Jesus would do. Come on, somehow. That's what Jesus could do. Uh, it ain't about you seeing me. No longer I live, but Christ liveth in me. For the life that I now live, I live in faith. What is faith? The word of God. The word that I hide in my heart that I might not sin against me. So when I may not sin against him. So when you see me, you see the Lord. When you see me, you see the Lord. So when I, why when they see you? And Jesus over here praying. You over there angry and bitter. And Jesus never forgave him a long time ago. He said, please, so I said, please, get back in alignment. Please, come on, say please. Get back in the mirror. So when I give, you give. When I forgive, you forgive. When I'm patient, you patient. So when they see you, they will glorify your father. When they see you, they will glorify your father. That are in heaven. God says, I got too many independent Christians. I got too many independent Christians that I can't see. They, they don't see me because their heart is full of iniquity. Lawlessness means you won't obey the word. But I'm so glad he said you're known by their fruit. And the fruit that we're bearing is the mirror. That's why he said, what's, what's the scripture? He said, Jesus I know who he saw in front. He said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Why? Because they look just alike. But the sons of Sceba who going to try to come cast out some demons under their own power. Them demons like, you done messed up. You don't look like Jesus. Bam! See, God is trying to get his reflection up on the earth. He wants his reflection up on the earth through Christ Jesus being in you. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was hungry, isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus forgave. Who are we not to forgive? Jesus was merciful. Who are we not to show mercy? Jesus was kind. Who are we not to be kind? Well, you don't know what they did to me. No, but I know what we did to Jesus. I know what I did to Jesus. Just myself. That's why I don't want to be, I can't come to him pride and arrogant. That's why last night I had to be like, man, all glory to God. God, because if I was kind to you, if I was loving to you, if I, if I was holy before you, it's only, because of, it's only because I was following Jesus. Any good you saw in me, it's Jesus. Because if I get separated from Jesus, you better get out the way. That's what Paul was saying. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because if I leave Jesus, you better get out. I'm going to kill you. No longer I live, but it's Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live in faith. Faith come out what? Hearing what? With, that's the mirror. He who gave his life for me. 
Who was the one that gave who showed me how to love when I didn't know how to love? Remember I told you we needed an example this morning. Who showed me how to forgive when I don't know how to forgive? I see some of the daughters in here and sons in here who was going through a lot. And they fell on their face before God and God had to teach them how to forgive. God had to teach them how to love. And I know it was hard. But I'm so glad they didn't run away from God, but they ran to God to teach them. Amen. Because God can teach me to do things I cannot do. Because sometimes you can make me so mad I don't want to forgive you. But I'm so glad that it's not me. And I want to, I don't know about you, I want to be like Jesus. Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. Forgiveness please the Father. Why? It's in the Word. Compassion please the Father. Why? Please, why? It's in the Word. Long-suffering pleases the Father. Why? It's in the Word. Envy, jealousy, murder, that comes out of our heart. It's not in the Word. To hug somebody when they did you wrong. That's what Jesus did. The Bible says he kissed Judas. When Judas kissed him, he, he said, my friend, all you're doing is ushering me into my destiny. Well, see, sometimes God will have you love the one that you did you wrong. Why? Because they ushered you into a higher level of God. They ushered you into a place to love like you never would have known how to love if they didn't usher you into that. Y'all ain't understanding. I know it don't feel good. Thank you, baby girl. It don't feel good. You know why Judas, he said, Judas, my friend, he had to have a Judas. If there was no Judas, we would not be saved. <laughs> Judas, took Je Judas took Jesus to a higher level of love. Some people, you don't have conflict with this year. How many of us have had conflict with some people this year? Some, of them, some people have aggravated you this year. You wanted to kill them. Don't lie. You want her. Uh. Some people don't try you this year. You want, don't get mad at them. Just let God take you to another place of love. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you what the Bible said. He said it's not joyful at the time. It's not joyful at the time when you're hurt and you're wounded. I cannot imagine Jesus sitting there talking about these nails feel good. I just don't imagine him saying that. I don't think Jesus was sitting there when they put a... Do y'all know they put a bag over Jesus' head? And they punched him and said, prophesy who hit you. These grown, see, you see this? These are grown men throwing haymakers at Jesus' face and saying, prophesy. I don't think every time he felt the blow hit against his face that he was saying, this feel good. I don't think it felt good when he took, when they took thorns. Come on, you got to think about thorns. They shot, you ever had, anybody had a sticker in your, oh my God. Could you imagine? Anybody want to, can I get somebody to, to try? Can I go get some stickers from my side and get you to walk on them? Anybody going to walk on for me? Okay, Andre. Not with your shoes, though. Barefooted? You going to walk on barefooted? I'm tempted. I am so tempted. But I am so tempted, but I got to keep preaching. I'm, I'm, I'm so tempted to try that, brother. You know what I'm saying? You know why? Because that's painful. So could you imagine for them to get the thorns and wrap them and press them on his skull? And they're cutting his skin as they go down and blood is drenching from his face. I don't think Jesus was like, man, this is fun. Could you imagine that they had 39 tails and they had hooks and they would take the 30 and they will whip his back and it will grab a hold of the flesh and they will snatch it back. And you sitting here, and we sitting here crying because somebody talked about you? Really? We can't forgive somebody because they said they lied on you? And then they took him and they put on a hand to the wall and they took nails this long and they began to pound it through his flesh 
into a wood. Man, you ever bumped your toe? You be about to cry. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine Jesus. It would be one thing if they did it at the same time. But if they didn't, man, you sitting there and you don't felt the pain and know it's getting ready to come again. And they got your feet together taking a nail this long and pounding it through your flesh and he on the cross saying forgive them for they know not what they do is this the same spirit we have Because that's the spirit of Christ. I'm not saying you're not going to feel it. See, people think, they, they try to get me twisted. They think, I'm saying forget it. Don't worry about it. No, you're going to feel the pain. But you can choose to love past the pain. And watch this. And the only reason why you're choosing to love past the pain, because you know, wait a minute. If God ain't there, I ain't choosing to do it. I'm just being honest. If I don't believe God is in it, I'm not sure why. Because if God ain't in it, ain't no life going to come out of it. So I might as well go on to get my own revenge. I might as well do my own. Come on. Y'all looking like I'm crazy. If God ain't in it, then there's no hope in it. And if there's no hope, oh, I'm going to get you after you got me. But because God is in it, I can trust God to change what the enemy is making to look crazy. I can trust God to make it greater than it was. I can trust God to make it better than it was. Anybody want God to make you greater than you were? Anybody want God to make you want more wonderful? Anybody want God to do your makeover? That you all the people look at you like, girl, you, oh my God, I can see the glory of God. They're not talking about your hair. They're not talking about your looks. They're talking about your heart. I can see the glory of God on you. You rich. Because your heart is rich. Because the word of God dwells in you so richly that people's lives are being changed and things are happening. You rich. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. I know these two words today, man, get the morning service and get the, listen to it over again because I know it's, it was rough for me. I'm the one preaching it through me. I'm like, God, man, I can't. That mirror, boy, it's something about that mirror. And it's interesting because I see the mirror cracked. And some of us, we got a cracked heart. What does crack mean? Now you see through it. You can't see clearly. But I'm so glad that God, that the word of God, there ain't no crack in this word of God. Man, let God help you. Not to go back to being the woman you used to be. Not to go back to be the man. Man, let God take you to a level that you never imagined it could be possible. Let God take you to a place of glory that you never saw in your life. Let God extend your love to a place that you didn't even know that you had the ability to love. How do I do that? Man, I don't know how to do that. Surrender to the, surrender to the example and let him teach you. Amen? Come on, give God some praise. Do we have any visitors tonight?